hello. So in this really tiny tutorial, I'm going to show how to make this kind of dynamic simulation in Blender. So it creates this almost kind of wave-like effect, neat kind of vaporwave look. So what you're going to want to do is in your new Blender, first delete the cube, and we're going to add a new object. I pressed Shift A to add a new object, and I'm going to go to Grid. Now, I'm going to click on wireframe so I can see how many vertices there are and just increase the number of subdivisions. I'm going to go with 50 subdivisions. So entering that here, I now have my new grid object. Now I'm going to want to add a new icosphere. So each of these icospheres is going to go on the vertices of this plane. So the icosphere I also added with Shift A. Now, I'm going to want to parent this icosphere onto this plane. So, I have my icosphere selected, I hold shift and click on the plane, and now I can either right click and go to parent, and then object, or I can press control P and set the parent to object. So now, I can see that the icosphere is a child of the grid. Now, in order to get it to instantiate, I need to click on my grid, and I'm going to go over here, uh, to the um, object properties, click on instancing, and vert. Now it's way too big, so we're going to need to click on our icosphere and shrink it. So I'm going to press S to scale and scale it until it's kind of small and going to look good in the simulation. Now for now, I'm going to give the icospheres a uh, new glowing material. So I'm going to go to my viewport. Actually, first thing, I'm going to go to my world, and I'm going to set the background to completely black. And now, I'm going to go to my shaders, and I'm going to add a new shader, and I'm going to change it from principled BSDF into emission. And let's set that to 5. And now, in order to get the bloom effect, I'm going to go to my camera, and I'm going to turn on bloom. Okay, maybe that's a bit too bright, so let's turn that down. Okay, now we're going to want to add in the ripple effect. So we go to our grid, and we go to Physics Properties. And in Physics Properties, we click on Dynamic Paint. So now we have a Dynamic Paint Canvas, but it's not going to work yet. We need to add a canvas. And instead of Paint, we're going to want to go down to Surface here and change it to Waves. Now it's not going to work quite yet. We're going to want to add a Paint Brush. So I'm going to add another sphere. Let's just add another icosphere, shrink it down, and now on this icosphere, I'm going to add dynamic paint, but I'm going to change it to brush, and I'm going to click add brush. Now we can test out our simulation. I can start it running, and I can move around the icosphere. Now in order to get it to look like I did at the beginning, we're going to need to hide the plane, and we're going to need to make the shaders more advanced. But for now, this is a pretty good start. So on the grid, under instancing, I'm going to not display instancer, and I'm not going to render instancer. Now, for icosphere, I'm going to go into our shader, sorry, not that icosphere, in the icosphere's instance to the grid, I'm going to go into shading. And now, I'm going to change it so that we actually get a color change. So we're going to want to add an input, and we're going to want to add geometry. So that's going to give us the position of the spheres. Now we're going to want to separate the x, y, and z axis. So how I'm adding these, I'm pressing shift A and then searching for what I need. So we're going to move our position into separating x, y, and z. Now we're going to need to do some math, so I'm going to add math node. It's a pretty small scene, we need our z vector. I'm going to add a very small value and divide. I just duplicated using shift D and I'm going to divide by another value. And now we're going to move that into a color ramp. Oops. So we're going to move our color into the emission, and now we're going to give ourselves two different colors. Let's give ourselves a light blue at the bottom, and moving into like a red or a pink. Okay, now that's pretty good. And it should be working right off the bat. Let's see. Yes, so now we get the nice blue and red shade as it goes up. So the addition and division I did was for scaling. 
because I want it to be pink at a certain height, like a 0.1z, and I want it to be uh, blue at negative 0.1. So in order to get it blue at negative 0.1 and pink at 0.1, I just added 0.1 and divided by 0.2 to scale it, because the shader for this needs a 0 to 1 input to move between blue and red. Now if I wanted to look a little fancier, I can go to this icosphere, my paintbrush, and I can go to modifiers, and I can add a wireframe, and then I can give it a material, and I can give it the, uh, the exact same material as before. So now, when I run it, it changes color as well. And that's it. There's a lot of interesting effects you can do, and in Ian Hubert's really good lazy tutorial, he uses it to kind of pretend to be water for some ducks moving through it. I'll link that tutorial in the comments.